Hi everyone, um, I'm here to show you a little bit on uh, how I'm testing the backend and the frontend of a Django app. A, a new flow that I uh, found out using PyTest Snapshot. Uh, for those of you that don't know about PyTest Snapshot, uh, it's a PyTest plugin. Uh, well, PyTest is the V framework for testing Python apps. Uh, so it's a plugin uh, for snapshot testing. Um, and what do I mean by snapshot testing? If you're a React dev, uh, you probably know what a snapshot test is, uh, but it's not that uh, uh, common on the backend side. Uh, so um, this is an example. I have a Django app here. Uh, I'm using PyTest as the test runner. Um, so I have this test here, uh, test sample API view. It's just a simple test that uh, makes a GET request for an API view uh, and uh, uses the snapshot testing. So I use uh, snapshot dot uh, assert match, and this assert match here it checks uh, that the response content is the same as the contents of this file here. This file is on my file system. It's on snapshots. Well, test sample because it's the name of the uh, uh, test file. Uh, sample API view because it's the name of the test and the name of uh, the file that I pass here. Uh, so what this does is it just checks that they are exactly the same. Um, and this helps us to test the backend in a couple of ways. Uh, it helps us uh, because uh, if, if you tested backend API uh, apps, you're probably used to those kinds of tests that are, they just get the response and go key by key checking that the values are matching. Like this value, uh, this key of the JSON file, uh, the JSON response is this, another key, another value. What this snapshot assert match does is it's, it automates that for you. So if your view is uh, uh, changing a key or changing a, 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 some formatting or something, this test will break. This test will fail. Um, but the first time that you run this, you won't have this file, of course. Um, so it, it gives us, uh, if you run PyTest with uh, a snapshot update flag, with this snapshot update flag, uh, it creates that file for you. So um, it automates a little bit of this part of the testing that is always manual and uh, sometimes you just forget to test a key or you test it a little bit wrong. And this, this is like a little bit of bureaucracy uh, that guarantees that if you change anything that could have a side effect on the view, uh, like a model or something, this test will fail. Um, so it's, it's like a bureaucracy for you to just uh, keep in mind the changes that are being made to the API. So uh, yeah, that helps on the backend, um, but I figured out a way to, to use this uh, to test front-end apps as well. So I use Cypress, uh, you see the Cypress folder here. I use Cypress to test the front end because I, I, I don't really like front, uh, uh, front end unit testing uh, because sometimes you just uh, test like the internals of a component, for example, in a React app, instead of uh, testing how the whole app is used. Uh, and Cypress is uh, known for more of an integration testing solution. Uh, so I have, uh, well, I'll, I'll run Cypress here. I have this uh, file here, well, uh, the tests for the welcome page. I have two uh, tests here, one that just checks that the page renders correctly and another that you can click a link and you go to that link. Uh, it's just some sample tests, okay? Uh, so I'll run Cypress here. 
Uh, what Cypress is, what Cypress does is that it opens up uh, a browser, a real browser, and execute commands and make assertions on the behavior of your app. So if the, the correct test is somewhere, if when I click a button, something happens, you know, this, this kind of test is, is, I think it's better for uh, uh, testing the front end. So you see, I run the test suite and it just executes a lot of things uh, and verifies what I tell it to verify. So yeah, um, this welcome page, it has uh, a, a React component that makes an API call. An API call to that API that I was testing with the snapshot test. Uh, so, um, and, and one of the good things about uh, Cypress is that it, it puts itself between the front end and the back end. So we can intercept uh, front end API calls to the back end uh, and return like fake data so that you don't need to execute real code, uh, real back end code when testing the front end uh, because it, it would be bad, right? If, if we hit the back end, because then whenever uh, anyone ran the tests, they would need to have like a real specific database so that the data that is re returned from the API is always the same, so that the test can pass. So Cypress has this uh, interception of requests um, so that you can just return like fake JSON files. Um, the way it does it, it, it we before, I, I'm running it on before each, so it runs before every uh, test. Uh, I use I intercept and I pass the method and I pass the API endpoint and I return what they call a fixture. A fixture is just a JSON file that contains the contents that this API, this fake API will return. Uh, so then we visit the home page and then we use sci wait get message. You see this get message is the alias that I put uh, to the um, fake URL. So what the sideway does is two things. First, it uh, checks that the front end really made the API call to this URL here. So it checks that the front end effecti effectively did the thing it should. And then, uh, and the second thing is that it, it guarantees that uh, the uh, later assertions will be done after the API request is done. Um, so it's, it's really, uh, I think it's almost necessary for you to use SciWait when you're uh, dealing with API calls, with front-end testing um, in a more general sense. Um, but you see the relationship between the, th the two things, right? Now the backend tests are generating a JSON and checking that the return of the API call matches the JSON. So the JSON will always be like real data from the backend, uh, data that was returned from real code. And the front end testing tools have a way to return fake JSONs. So the, th the two things match. So what I've done is uh, I've create, I've went, uh, I went to the cypress.json, which is like the configuration JSON file for Cypress, and I just configured the fixtures folder, the folder that will have those fake JSON files to use the tests snapshots folder, which is the folder generated by PyTest snapshot. So whenever uh, I, for example, I change the API, the backend test will fail and I will need to run PyTest with the flag to update the snapshot. And with the updated snapshot, it automatically changes the JSON that is returned on the tests for the front end. So if any changes to the backend break something on the front end, 
I don't need to do anything to, I don't need to change any tests, I don't need to change any configuration. I just need to run the test, the front-end tests again, and we'll, it will detect if something broke. So for example, if the API, instead of returning uh, a message key with this message here, which is this, um, this message here, uh, which is on the front-end test, if I change this for, for example, on the API to success message or something, uh, the front end test test will would automatically break. I wouldn't do, need to do anything else, and it helps us to change to to test the front end, but it also goes both ways. So if, for example, I'm prototyping something on the front end that will need a specific uh, change to an API somewhere, I can just go to the JSON of the of that API and change it to what I need it to be. Um, so the front-end tests will pass, but since I changed the snapshot, the back-end test will fail, and I will need to update the API to give us that better formatting that the front-end is expecting. So it goes both ways. If you change the back-end, it will reflect on the front-end tests, and if you change on the front-end, it impacts the backend test. So I think it's, it's, uh, it's a good flow for you to develop um, front-end and backend uh, apps uh, in sync. So yeah, that's about it that I wanted to tell you about. Uh, I'm really loving this flow. Uh, it's, I think it would be a little bit harder with dynamic data. Um, but I think there's always a, a little bit of, uh, of things to do so that uh, this, kinds of, this kind of automatic flow can happen. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really loving this. Uh, and if you have any questions or suggestions, uh, just ping me on the comments, okay? Uh, thanks for your attention and see you soon.